So uh, my name is Todd Carignan. The one on the left is called Beach Town. It's 12 by 16, it's oil on board. Um, this one was started on location. Uh, I teach at the Cameron Museum, and this was actually part of one of the classes where we went down to the beach, to Wrightsville Beach, and did some painting on location. It happened to be a beautiful fall day. So my main concern is with catching that early morning light. Uh, it's nice and warm. We've got the long shadows, and I thought it was really dramatic. Uh, this is looking south, uh, where you can see people walking the loop in the distance. Loggerheads is there on the right. You have wings down there at the end of the block with the glare of the sun coming off of it. When I work, I don't tend to finish things on location, but I want to get as much information as I can. I go back to my studio, and without working from photographs, I tend to just try to remember what the moment felt like, capturing those memories, accentuating color. I like to do a lot of broken color. And it creates a lot of vibration and movement. When I'm, when I'm working on it, the main thing that I'm uh, concerned with is the overall design and just leading you into the picture. And then I like to pepper it with little details, like the people walking, you know, the signs. I don't want anything to be too distinct, you know, because when you do work from your memory, when you think about things that you've seen, you don't remember everything perfectly clear. So it's nice to have a painting where you can kind of fill in some of those things yourself. So the center one is called Morning on the River. It's 12 by 12, it's oil on board. This one was also started on location as part of my class. Um, how it started out and how it ended were very, very different. Uh, that morning was very misty with the clouds coming up over and that heavy atmosphere it's created a lot of low contrast. Uh, the, I wanted to keep the values close together and just show how that Cape Fear River Bridge was very ghost-like in the background. For this one, I used a palette knife. The palette knife causes a lot of accidental mark making. I also took my time with this over several months to build it up. I liked having the dry paint so that when I put the new paint over top of it, it would grab it in unexpected ways. This one is called Red Beard. It's eight by 10, oil on board. Back before everything shut down because of the virus, used to hire models a lot. <clears throat> so this is actually a local gentleman. Um, that has a business over on Castle Street. So starting it from life uh, is always important to me. I love being able to capture all those little moments that you don't get from a photograph. You know, how he's leaning, how he's looking, um, even conversation that happens while we have a sitter. I decided to use just a few colors and paint over it completely. So there's a lot of broken color lots of pure color, lots of reds and yellows and greens. When you lay those broken colors together against each other, it creates vibration. And of course, this, this was inspired by Van Gogh, who knew that broken color creates tension. And that tension always gives the illusion that there is movement.
Well, I mean, I, I like a lot of the Impressionists. Um, and actually a lot of the other artists from that time period have gotten more into the, um, the Russian Impressionists over time. So they're not afraid to use some nice grays, which I tend to be very tonal with a lot of my paintings. But people like Monet and Degas, of course. I like Van Gogh too. He's not afraid to explore some crazy color choices. This is Fritzi Huber, and I work predominantly in handmade paper. These pieces came about during uh, COVID at the beginning and into the first six months, and I had been really distraught like most of us were and a little depressed, and the previous work had been a bit angry, and I was sitting out on the back deck, and it started to rain, and the rain coming down the redbud tree and onto the leaves of the redbud had a very soothing effect, and I realized that what I had not been reflecting on was nature and the healing properties of nature in the world around me. And so this body of work came out of that. One of the things about the staining in the background of these is I wanted them to have a sense of time having passed, of being older, of maybe having been found, and. Um, having evidence of their their past and their experiences embellished on the surface. I have um, actual prints from the redbud leaves on these. I have previous paintings that were a little bit tumultuous. Um, I like to layer, so the tumult is layered over with a calming pattern and a more calming palette, and those lenticular shapes that are vertical those are reflective of the rain that was occurring on that day when um, that peacefulness came about and that sense of healing came about. These works are mixed media. So we have varieties of handmade paper, printmaking, dyes, acrylic, gouache, some airbrush, and a lot of the patterning comes from facing paper to paper and the other papers having color on them. And I feel that the deckled edge of the handmade paper gives a sense of something new and something old simultaneously. The piece to the right actually has an antique silk in it from the 1930s, that rose pattern there, because I wanted to bring something forward into it that had actually existed in the past and not in the present. These papers are all unsized, which means that um, they don't have anything to protect them from the water seeping through and going to the other side. So I do this thing that I call bruising, for lack of a better term, because I'll force color in from behind, and because there's no sizing in the paper, that will come up like a blush or like a stain from underneath the paper. So rather than being applied to the surface, it emerges from underneath. The uh, dots on there are actually because I cast the paper on a piece of pegboard, so they do have a relief to the surface. And when you're making the paper yourself, it's a little bit like clay. It'll take on whatever, um, whatever surface you cast it on. 
So if I wanted something that looked like lace, I would cast it on lace. This one, I just wanted that all over staggering dot pattern to feel more like maybe dew or rain or um, an element of movement that had to do with the atmosphere. This is part of the first two, the first two of um, looking at the, the rain and um, moisture coming off of the red bud. So those are all red bud leaves, the ones that have the print on them. So what I did is uh, dry the leaves, press the leaves like you would a pressed flower, and then instead of inking them up, I, uh, I did a dry brush acrylic on the surface and made the prints and then uh, cut those out and collage them on. There are a lot of collage elements on here. The painting was done previously and then these pieces collaged over the top. The green is actually a Japanese paper, uh, Mitsumata, that um, I liked its transparent qualities, like water having a transparency. I moved out here in uh, 1987, but I had applied for a artist in residence grant in California, and I didn't expect to get it. So after moving out, um, I had to go back to California and live in residence there to fulfill the grant. So I don't feel like I um, like I actually moved here until '89. There were two years of transition. And uh, that was from Southern California. I had been there for 17 years. I'm originally from Houston, Texas. And Michelle Connolly is the one who convinced me to get a studio here. She saw that I was trying to make paper at home and, you know, outdoors. And that's just so dependent on the weather. And so she convinced me to come and, and I've been here since then. But I've been a hand paper maker now for uh, 45 years. It's a collaboration with the surface rather than a total dictation to the surface. But I have it planned out in stages and at a certain point I have to let it go and let it talk to me. So I'm going to wait after this point for the response and for the piece to speak to me. And if I get too anxious about it, I'll put it on the walls where I can't touch it and just catch it out of the corner of my eye and come back and respond when it speaks to me. My name is Mark Weber. I work as a fine artist and an illustrator. Uh, many times I, I go in between a very uh, whimsical, pattern-filled, very colorful style, but then I'll go to a very subdued palette almost in a, a realistic mode, using silhouettes. The first piece is called No Strings Attached. And this, was, uh, this is a good example of my very uh, decorative style, uh, what I would call it. I just go right in and I start laying in colors and seeing what will emerge. In this case, uh, the shape of a guitar player. So this is an oil on canvas. I believe it's 24 by 36, however, it might be a little smaller than that. And it started basically by laying down just colors, random colors. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I'll go back and forth various times to pull shapes and forms. And as I was going along, I mean, it, it was not planned at all. I just had the feeling that it, the shape of a guitar player was taking its place. And so what I did was just basically work on that. Then I, I cut out shapes 
with my brush and go in and just keep building and try and get a push and a pull with dark, get some contrast and color. The second piece is titled Get Up. And uh, the story behind this, I, I received a commission not long ago and it was a very detailed commission. It was a, a nine foot by three and a half feet painting just filled with various elements of, of a, a lake scene with animals and plants. And it was just a lot of detail. And so after that, I said, I'm going to do something very simple. And that's when I got the, the idea of just doing uh, one shape, trying to figure out what I wanted to paint. And again, uh, most of my work, I just start laying down paint and see what will happen. And in this case, a rooster. And it's, it's, a, it's a limited palette. It's done mostly in blues and browns, whites, grays. But I wanted to show the exuberance of the rooster as he's crowing in the morning. And this is a larger piece. This is, uh, I believe, 30 by 48 oil on canvas. Much of my work, I strive to have a very looseness in it, yet tight when it comes to the, the actual patterns in the line work. The color palette evolved by basically, I, I wanted to do something very subdued, not, not too over the top. And I, I just do have an affinity for blues and browns, I must say, I do. <laughs> And I think the hardest part about doing a painting like this is just saying when to stop and not take it. I could take it further. I could have taken it much further. But to me, I just wanted the simplicity of that form jumping out at you. And that would have been lost if I would have cluttered it with too much plants or other objects. Now this third piece is a, is a good example of the work I do a lot of, sometimes I'll lay down just colors and use silhouettes. Again, you know, very much inspired by, uh, by the Wilmington area with the palm trees and so forth, the ocean. In this case, it's just a young woman looking out on the water. And this is called Calm. Very loosely done. I think this was one sitting, probably maybe two sittings it took me. Uh, the sky I had a lot of fun with because it's, it's ve very just, I just kind of went for it. You know, you got your drips and your stains and I love that effect. I, uh, I work a lot in watercolor as well. And uh, if I can capture that effect in oil, which this is an oil, uh, sometimes I just want to leave it that way. And again, it's, it's, it's in a limited palette. It's in blues, blacks, grays. Very much influenced by the Wilmington area with the palm trees and the, the ocean and so forth. Again, the biggest challenge in a piece like that is not to uh, overdo it, not to put too many things in to take away from the actual center of the piece, which is the woman. I'm originally from Erie, Pennsylvania. Moved to New Jersey, spent 10 years there with my wife, who was from New Jersey. And we uh, fell in love with North Carolina. We used to vacation in the Outer Banks, and uh, we came upon Wilmington by uh, our uh, daughter, who ended up going to UNCW. And we just fell in love with the city, and we moved down here in 2010. Been here 11 years now almost, and uh, we love it. We really do, yeah. My career started 
primarily as an illustrator, but I always painted. I always showed in galleries and everything, but the, the bulk of my work was illustration, and I did a lot of children's books. Some newspaper work, did work for the New York Times, some magazines, Rolling Stone, The Atlantic. And then as time went on though, I was really striving. I wanted to work bigger. I wanted to start flinging some paint around. <laughs> and uh, the first thing I said, I remember when I came into Acme was, I, I can get messy in here, right? And they said, of course. <laughs> so, uh, man, I, that, was, that was the go. That was the, uh, <laughs> you know, go for it. And although I painted my entire career, I have to say, I think since I've come into Acme, I've really uh, opened up as far as the painting goes. Uh, hmm. I've tried different things. I'm definitely more prolific than I ever have been right. prior to moving into Acme. I work primarily in oils for the paintings, uh, but I do also work in ink, watercolor, acrylics, gouache. I like to mix it up as best I can. I am Catherine Wolf Webb. I do many things, but the paintings you're seeing here are all abstract. Abstracts rely on shapes, colors, the forms, because they are mostly do not represent anything. Sometimes titles are given to them that will lead you to think of something. Significance is the title of this piece. It is a title picked out of the air. Um, I didn't know what to call it, but I guess the significance of the pieces of fabric involved um, are what I'm playing up. It is actually a collage there are pieces of fabric included in the painting and repeated with paint. The circles are to bring you into the painting and create motion. The materials are, are both fabric and paper. The white dots on black are fabric and the black dots on white are paper. Uh, polka dots are my favorite thing of all. That's why I included them. The orange pieces are to give some depth and a little zing to the painting. One of the things with abstracts is to repeat the same form many times to give it continuity. And that's what I did with the circles here. Uh, they, they draw your eye around the painting to keep them from being stagnant. They, they go from one dark spot with the fabric to the next dark spot with the fabric um, so that you, you're constantly looking at various parts of the painting. I kept the colors rather subdued on purpose so that the fabric and the splashes of orange would, would jump out. This painting is called, I Think the Garden is a Bit Overgrown. It is an abstract, but if I name it something that you can identify with and include a little bit of identifiable stuff in the painting, then it makes it a little more interesting for the viewer. The shapes are sort of windows to a perhaps garden the obvious vine shapes let you know that it is a garden. The thorns let you know that it is overgrown and needs to be cut back. Uh, the other pieces simply add interest to the abstract. Move your eye around the canvas. Hopefully you'll find little things to look at that are interesting. There's always contrast in a painting. That's what makes it interesting. This is a very limited palette. 
I've repeated the same hues, but in different shades to create interest and keep it from being boring. I've also done a lot of uh, what they call mark making, which my marks are, are rather tame in comparison to many artists. Um, I, again, like circles a lot. Once again, color and shape. That's all it is. And your imagination and my imagination On the next painting, which is framed, it also has a line around the edges, but it's not white like a mat. It's like a dark mat with various colors involved. This painting is called Black Forest, and our uh, thought of the blizzards and the cold in Russia with snow in the air and on the ground and the trees silhouetted against the dark forest beyond. But I wanted it abstract, but I also wanted you to be able to read something in it. And you can read the trees. You can tell those are tree trunks, big and small, and the tops of the trees. And I picked a palette that would say, it's cold here, which is a lot of blue. There's some lavender in it also, um, both of which are cool colors. On the right-hand side of the trees is just a mere suggestion of depth within the branches of the trees so that it won't take away from the central portion, which is high contrast. I have been painting all my life. That's all I can do. I've been at Acme for 10 years probably off and on. I was here for a while and then left and then came back and then left and then came back. And I, I like it because I can use the walls to hang and paint on as opposed to having an easel in here. And I can also work on this table, which is very uh, useful. It, it moves anywhere so I can rearrange to suit myself. I have two other studios at home, but, but I, this wall is just wonderful for working on for this kind of thing that's big um, and that I can leave and work at my leisure on. And whenever I see something that would look good on it, I save it and stick it up. I guess color is the thing color and shape, once again, an abstract. It's great fun to do because you can make no mistakes. Uh, you either cover them up or take them off if you think it's a mistake, but you can always put something over it with a collage. That's the joy of collage. You just keep doing it till you like it. Nature is the biggest thing. I think nature is incredible. And I don't think we can ever copy nature, but we can learn from it and admire it and uh, hope to create something that is as interesting as nature can be. Hi, I'm Angie Sinclair, and this one, I really changed the colors. They're darker, deeper. There's a lot of movement in the water. Sometimes you could say, oh, is that water? But it is, it's also the mixture of sand and water, and I have my models posed by the marsh. Um, but this one, you could see how the skin 
is coming through the dresses when they're wet. This originally, her face was different. I had her looking out this way. Her face was in a profile, and then I was like, I don't really like that. And I just changed it recently, and I really love the way it turned out. <laughs> this is one of my um, paintings that I worked on, and it's underwater, which sometimes I take photos from above looking down, but this one's under going up. And I really enjoy aspects of this where the water you could see the reflection from above the water and how it makes almost a pattern on the skin tones. So this was a really special piece. It's pretty large and there's only one image. Sometimes I use several uh, models and this is just the one. These were some women. They saw me um, taking pictures of some younger girls, and they said, oh, we want a model for you. And they were taking a water aerobic class at the Porter's Neck Country Club. And they're really cute. And I was like, oh, sure. So they're really pleased. And I did um, two other paintings similar, but and uh, one's hanging at the Porter's Neck Country Club. So yeah. it's really fun. I recently moved to Wilmington full-time and I'm very excited about it. I was coming here six months out of the year, but now I'm full-time resident and I just love it here at Acme. Um, it's very inspiring to be with other artists and I'm really happy to be here full-time. I've been painting for about 10 years and it's my own style. I've, t you know, I grew up going to art schools, but this is my own style. I do my own thing. I use my own colors. I really enjoy painting models, figures. I'm a pretty quick painter. I paint fast. So I would say it would take about two weeks to get the first most of the paint on it, then I let it sit and dry, and then I come back and look at it and decide what I want to change. I do like to work from my photos that I take, but with water, I just kind of create it myself. I don't even look sometimes at images of water. I always find something to do with water, and everyone's like, aren't you sick of water? And I'm like, no, I, I love it.